Nice uh, attendance orientation here. As uh, the director of the entire program, you know, it's my responsibility to upload all of our 500 first year students so they all have Moodle accounts. And uh, once they're in, their names pop up on the attendance list. And you know, something that you know for a lot of people looks like, well, this is so normal, this is so obvious. Guys, this takes a lot of work, okay, <laughs> and to make it happen. And then on page 16, a student decides to check her attendance or his attendance, and that's what the student would see. They'd see their face if they uploaded their own picture, and then they would see that they've been present seven times, uh, they've been absent once, and then they get their percentage points, and then they get like a detailed history of their attendance. Do you think this would be helpful for students at this university if they could check their attendance online? A lot of students like it. And um, now then, once that is established, the teacher sees a benefit in letting the students track their own attendance online. What else can you do online? Again, we're very much in the product side of teaching. We haven't really broken into any new ground yet. So you can give what we call um, an assignment. An assignment. So I'm going to leave this class and go to a class I am currently teaching, the Ego Zemi class, where we're working our way through the movie To Kill a Mockingbird, or in Japanese, Alabama Monogata. So, um, a lot of resources up here. Uh, again, the attendance module. Uh, what I want to learn in this class for my future. Uh, this is a short assignment. Let's see, turn that off. Yeah, this is what the students see. On um, the first day of class, you know, we talk about what we're going to do. And I ask the students to just write a little bit themselves uh, 100 words or more about what you want to learn in this class for your future. Oh, and in order to do that, they write online, they, sorry, they click the edit my submission box and then they type here and let's see, in this class I want to learn more about uh, American culture as it was in the 1930s. Okay, well that's, uh, I also want to learn more words and, and expressions about how to travel Hotels and food. Okay, so something like that. And when they're done writing, click Save Changes, and everything gets saved. Uh, and then as a teacher, you can click here, view your two assignments, and see them. Okay, now that's a live, uh, this is a live class going on, so we'll go back. Okay, so, if, of course, before just watching a video, you, you know, create a link to, say, the Voice of America's uh, homepage article about the Kilowatt Convert, and they can listen to the listen to it online. Education report. Millions of high school students have read to kill a mockingbird. And we're in a language lab and they're able to listen with headphones. And when they're done, then they click back and they move on down. Now then, you're probably wondering how can you show 
a movie on Moodle in class without breaking copyright laws. Well, the fact is, the movie is not in the Moodle. You still have to put it in the DVD player and press play. And that would, well, and then you get the menu from the DVD and you can watch this scene and this scene and this scene and this scene, which is what we do. Like on the first class, we're watching scenes one through four. And then thanks to movie fanatics around the world, we've got all of the words from the movie's closed caption downloaded and uploaded onto the internet for anyone to, to, uh, to benefit from, to read, and download, and copy. So there's, um, so here are all of the words uh, from scene two. Scene one is just the musical introduction. And so the students can go back and refer to this. Some of the students like to print it out and watch the movie with the closed caption and then circle words and underlying sentences they don't understand. Then and here we have vocabulary words from the first four scenes. I tell the students, guys, you really should know these words. I trust you remember these words from high school. You probably know these words as well. However, these are words that you may not know. So they can work with that. And then, here is um, an assignment that they can do after watching each scene. Um, they have questions, like for scene two, bottom-up questions, what is the name of the small town, what is the name of the father, what is the name of the girl, what is the name of the boy, why did Mr. Cunningham give a bag of hickory nuts to the man, and the last question is a kind of an inferential question or a what do you think question. Are these people rich or poor? Now you do this for a few weeks and the students really get to know the movie and I tell them, rent the DVD and watch it in Japanese. You know, we want to talk about the movie, but we want to do this in English, so build up your background information. When we get to that point, I look forward to doing something very creative, which I mentioned earlier, and that is setting up a forum for discussion. Mm, yeah, here. You put up a forum for discussion. Discussion forum. And it's got all of the settings in there, and we'll just set one up very quickly, and you have to introduce the forum. <laughs> This, and Moodle is very good about reminding you of the mistakes that you've done. You get the red box. This forum is to share and exchange opinions about <clears throat> the movie. Okay, this is very basic. And you got the interface here, and then students would click on the forum, and they would add a new topic, and they'd say, I liked this movie because, and then they would write their reaction to the movie, I like this movie because, and they could post to the forum, and uh, other students could see it, and other students could respond to it. Other students could respond saying, yeah, I like the movie too, but I didn't like this. It was in black and white, it wasn't in color. I don't like black and white movies. Okay, well, that's what they're thinking, okay? That's, that's when you move away from you know, the product-oriented approach to education to the process-oriented approach to education. And that's what I'd like to, you know, end with. I'm going to cancel this because this is an ongoing class. And just say, it's hard at first. You know, Moodle may seem really hard or difficult, 
but give your, be patient with yourself. Um, move at the same speed as your students. One of the biggest mistakes teachers with Moodle make is they go too fast for their students. As a teacher working with students, you can only go as fast as they can go when introducing Moodle. And 